please join in the call to worship. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God, who redeems us from sin and death. For us and for our salvation, Christ became obedient unto death, even on the cross. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Merciful God, you gave your Son to suffer the shame of the cross. Save us from hardness of heart, that seeing him who died for us, we may repent, confess our sin, and receive your overflowing love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Psalter reading this evening is excerpts from Psalm 22, the psalm that Jesus cried out from the cross. He cried out the first lines, but he knew the entire psalm, a psalm of lament, a psalm of despair and pain, and yet a psalm of trust and hope. Listen. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh, my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted, 
they trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved, in you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me, they make mouths at me, they shake their heads, commit your cause to the Lord, let him deliver, let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me, strong bulls of Bashan encircle me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a pot shard, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far away. O oh my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion, from the horns of the wild oxen. You have rescued me. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. To him, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Our scripture, our second scripture reading, our gospel, is now the story of Jesus' betrayal, arrest, and crucifixion according to the Gospel of John. Now listen to this. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who had betrayed him, also knew the place because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that my father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer and the Jewish police, arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. 
Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. The woman who guarded the gate said to Peter, you are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing there and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus in the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, You are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, the cock crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own? Or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom belonged to this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born. For this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who be belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? After he had said this, He went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a rebel. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged, and the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in purple, in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man! When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. They answered him, We have a law. And according to that law, he ought to die, 
because he has claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, here is your king. They cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, we have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read the inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Meanwhile, Standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home, after this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of wine on a branch of hyssop and held it up to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. And then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit.
Let us join our hearts together in prayer. Holy God, on this somber night, we make space for pain and sorrow. On this night, we look directly into the face of suffering and injustice and grief. Your suffering in Jesus Christ resonates through our beings, shaking us, unsettling us, changing us. We recognize our own powerlessness in the face of death, and we also grieve and feel angry and afraid with all the disciples who walked with you. Through the power of music this night, we have been transported and reminded of the pain of Jesus' mother Mary, and we feel it in our hearts too. Carry us, holy God, through the darkness of this night. Help us to remember that you are with us even here, even now. It was you who knit us together in our mother's wombs and you who gave us birth. It was you who saved our ancestors and you who came to earth in the form of Jesus of Nazareth to transform death into life, despair into hope, an ending into a new beginning. This is the in-between time, and we wait with you, God. We cry out to you with all our needs. We trust in you, our creator, our redeemer, our sustainer. And when we flounder in our belief, help our unbelief. Awaken our trust and turn our hearts toward Easter. Walk with us through the valley of the shadow of death and let us fear no evil, for you are with us now and forevermore. Amen. We have been given everything. This life, this body, this community, this day, this opportunity to love and to serve, this opportunity to give and be generous. Offerings tonight, offering gifts to support the music ministry of Fourth Church can be placed in the offering plate as it's passed, or after the service, they can be placed in the offering boxes at the exits. Gifts can also be given on our website. All undesignated gifts this evening will benefit the music program. During Holy Week, we also receive an offering called One Great Hour of Sharing. If you indicate OGHS, One Great Hour of Sharing, on your gift, it will support Chicago Lights Tutoring and the Social Service Center here at the church, Fourth Church Meals Ministry, and the work of the Presbyterian Disaster Assistance Program, the Hunger Program, and the Self-Development of People Program, the One Great Hour of Sharing. Here in the sanctuary, you can also use the offering envelopes in the pew racks. Our Good Friday offerings will now be received.
Please join me in the response of Litany for Good Friday. O crucified Jesus, Son of the Father, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, eternal Word of God, we worship you. O crucified Jesus, holy temple of God, dwelling place of the Most High, gate of heaven, burning flame of love, we worship you. O crucified Jesus, sanctuary of justice and love, full of kindness, source of all faithfulness, we worship you. O crucified Jesus, ruler of every heart, in you are all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, in you dwells all the fullness of the Godhead, we worship you. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Almighty God, look with mercy on your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and to be given over to the hands of sinners and to suffer death on the cross who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
Friends, on this night, like all other nights, our God is with us. God came to this earth, entered into a human body, and experienced human existence in the form of Jesus of Nazareth. For 33 years, he walked this earth. Tonight, we mark them all by the tolling of the bells. An incredible gift was given to us. And for every year, every month, every day, and every minute since that time, God has continued to dwell with us. She does not waver. God's holy love endures. So, my friends, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit go with you this night and always. Amen.